Welcome to this episode of Sykes Now Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will discuss factors that influence sensitivity in electrospray ionization and provide a clearer understanding of their effects. Let's briefly recap the process that occurs when the initial droplets shrink and the charge density reaches the Rayleigh limit. At this point, the droplets explode, resulting in the formation of smaller droplets from their surface. This means that molecules that are located at the surface of the droplets have the highest probability to be detected. Key influences include the molecular properties of the target molecules, in particular their hydrophilicity and acidic dissociation constant. But also the flow rate and the LC selectivity can play an important role. Upon further examination of droplets with a more aqueous solvent composition, we can see that the more hydrophilic compounds are located in the interior of the droplets, while the more hydrophobic compounds tend to reside at the surface. Hydrophilic compounds are less likely to reach the second generation of droplets compared to hydrophobic molecules, resulting in reduced sensitivity for these compounds. This can be particularly pronounced at the beginning of the gradient in reversed phase liquid chromatography, especially if the source parameters are not optimized for hydrophilic compounds. As we have already learned, only molecular ions can be detected in mass spectrometry. Let's take the positive ion mode as an example and consider the case where the two molecules A and B elute from the LC column simultaneously. These molecules compete for the number of protons in the initial droplets. The one with the higher acid dissociation constant, that is the more basic molecule, will be the one where more molecules carry an additional proton and are thus charged. Charged molecules tend to accumulate on the surface of the initial droplets. This is why it is more likely that the more basic molecules are incorporated into the second generation droplets allowing for detection with higher sensitivity under these co conditions. The likelihood of detecting specific molecules and their tendency to loss is influenced by their location within the electrospray droplets. This effect is especially pronounced when the droplets are primarily aqueous because the initial size of droplets containing more organic solvent is smaller and evaporates more readily. If targeting those molecules that are located at the center of aqueous droplets, it is therefore advisable to increase the organic solvent content. As described before, these are molecules that are more hydrophilic. When reverse phase liquid chromatography is used, it is the nature of hydrophilic compounds being eluted within the more aqueous phase of the gradient. Using either a slightly different gradient, another reversed phase selectivity or even a different LC separation mode, such as normal phase LC, can be beneficial. The flow rate not only impacts the optimal source parameters, but also the size of the initial droplets. A lower flow rate results in smaller initial droplets, which evaporate more easily, allowing for the formation of more generations of droplets. As a consequence, Less molecules will be lost for analysis, and more molecules can be detected. When analyzing an analyte at a given concentration with different flow rates, the sensitivity can be higher at lower flow rates. Furthermore, you can obtain a better sensitivity for those molecules that, due to their molecular properties, tend to be at the center of larger droplets. For smaller droplets, the relative surface area is greater and thus the probability for any molecule to be at the surface. The described effects become more pronounced the smaller the flow rate gets. Note that a flow rate below a critical threshold requires the use of an electrode with a smaller inner diameter to achieve the field strength necessary for the formation of a Taylor cone, and thus the start of the electrospray process. How can we apply the knowledge we have acquired to effectively perform sample analysis in practice. First of all, it is important to prevent ion suppression. 
This term refers to the case where our target ions cannot effectively compete for positioning at the droplet surface during the electrospray process. To address this, it is beneficial to achieve good LC separation of the analytes. You can also try using another LC selectivity or separation mode to increase the content of organic solvent at the time when your target analyte is eluted. In addition, it is advisable to put effort into the sample preparation. The less matrix in your sample, the less molecules compete for the place at the surface, also referred to as matrix effect. You can try lower flow rates to achieve better sensitivity. Lower flow rates generate smaller electrospray droplets, while also decreasing the volume of expensive LC and S grade solvents and minimizing costly waste. Some users partly divert the LC flow before it enters the mass spectrometer, with the risk of reduced reproducibility. LC modifiers can also make a difference. Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to sciex.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the Sciex Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.